Hello everyone, Ben Wigman here, field agronomist for Bex Hybrids in Southern Illinois. Today I wanted to take a couple minutes to do a general uh, recap of what's been going on in the past week or so, but then also what to look for maybe in the next week to 10 days here. So I'm sitting here at our Effingham facility at the PFR farm and one of our tile drainage studies here that was planted on April 26th, so that last week of April here. And as you can see behind me, this crop emerged very well. And currently we're sitting at about the V2 growth stage. So we have two complete leaf collars. We got here one at the bottom and then here moving up the stem or the plant. But then we have two new leaves starting to come out here, but these haven't completely emerged because we haven't seen that complete leaf collar yet. So we're sitting at a solid V2 right here. Now, one thing we wanna make sure that we're doing at this stage and even as soon as it emerges is getting out into our fields and seeing what kind of plant sand that we have. So if we're in 30 inch row setting, what we wanna be looking for is measure out 17 and a half feet with your tape measure and count how many plants that is. Whatever your number is, take that times a thousand and that's going to be your plants per acre. So for example, if you count 32 plants in that 17 and a half feet, take it times a thousand, you have 32,000 plants per acre. This will help decide, you know, how good was your emergence, but then also when you, uh, it's also good to know when you get to harvest, you know, if there's something that uh, maybe went wrong or something like that, it'll help you decide and uh, knock out any possibilities if there was any issues that went on. Also need to keep in mind on soybeans too, you know, there's been a fair amount of corn and soybeans planted here in the past week. And as they start to emerge, be taking stand counts on those beans also. You know, right now we should probably be dropping those beans at about, you know, 145 to 155, somewhere in there as we get to the middle of May. You know, in the next week or so, we'll probably want to bump that up to about 150, 160 there so we have enough plants per acre out there. But when we're scouting our bean stands, you know, as it sits today, you know, we, we could still get by with a solid 90,000 plants per acre out there. Um, you know, so it's the same thing there, counting on beans. If we're on 15 inch row, we're, we're still going to count out 17 and a half feet, but we're going to measure two rows or count two rows this time and take it times a thousand just to help gauge what our plant stand is there. You know, but that 90,000 for me, the middle of May is going to be the cutoff if we're deciding if we need to keep a stand or replant it out here. Now, jumping back to corn with this crop sitting at V2, um, V3 comes a big time for us in PFR, um, especially with a PFR proven success strategy of side dressing corn. If we think about side dressing corn, um, why it such, has such a large benefit? Well, a lot of that's because of when uh, the plant takes up nitrogen throughout its life cycle. And, and we're really gonna hit a peak uptake right at that V8 all the way through pollination um, up to about R2 when we have blister. And we're gonna take up roughly seven pounds of nitrogen every day for about 21 days straight out there. So we wanna be able to place that nitrogen out here. Now, when we're thinking about side dress applications of nitrogen, you know, the top two probably most applicable or most efficient ways are going to be one side dressing with liquid um, whether that's down the center of the row culturing it in or with a wide drop and the second is in hydrous my go-to is culturing down the center of the row with liquid and i like liquid because it gives us more options the first thing that i'm going to be adding to that tank when i'm side dressing with my nitrogen is going to be sulfur if it, if this is my only pass that i'm going to be putting sulfur on I'm going to be targeting 30 pounds of nitrogen out there, especially if I have um, 180 pounds of actual nitrogen. I like that six to one nitrogen to sulfur ratio out here. We need to be having that sulfur out there since we aren't getting it from the atmosphere. That sulfur is also going to help in getting nitrogen up into that plant. With the high nitrogen prices that we're enduring right now, we want to be the most efficient that we can with our nitrogen applications. The second thing I'm going to be putting in that liquid tank when I'm side dressing my nitrogen is a product called humic acid, but furthermore, Humica, which is a PFR proven product. Across three years, it's about a $7 advantage and three and a half bushel advantage for us here. Now, is this humic acid product something that we're just gonna make a simple, a single application of that? No, it's an additive. We need to help, we need to put that in there and this is gonna help better utilize that nitrogen, but it's also going to be a food source and an air source for the microbes in our soil that are, tra that are transforming that fertilizer to a readily available source. Humic acid is made up of carbon and oxygen, so carbon is going to be that food source for those microbes. Oxygen is going to be an air source so we can um, help that microbial activity out in our soil out here. Now with that, you know, just to recap, make sure you're walking your plant stands out here. 
um, being mindful of what's emerging. You know, we've had a lot of different weather conditions across the area, whether it's no rain to a lot of rain. Um, be walking those plant stands, but then be mindful of that crop that was planted early. Be mindful of that side dress application. If we're applying liquid, let's throw some sulfur and some humic acid in that tank to help better utilize that nitrogen out there. With that, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative and we'd be happy to help you. Thanks and have a great day.